we present the United States Senator John F. Kennedy story. This is Washington, D.C., official capital of the United States, unofficial capital of the free world, where the people of Massachusetts visit today with Senator and Mrs. John F. Kennedy. In this historic building, each Senate legislative battle reaches its dramatic climax. It is here that a bill is debated. It is here that Senator Kennedy and his colleagues vote on its merits. The place where Senator Kennedy keeps his fingers on the pulse beat of Massachusetts, however, is the Senate office building a handsome white marble structure just across historic Constitution Avenue from the Capitol. Here, most committees, all senators, and the Vice President of the United States maintain their actual working headquarters. It is here that scores of Massachusetts visitors and hundreds of Massachusetts letters, telegrams, and telephone calls are received each day in Senator Kennedy's bustling office. Let's ask Joan Delaney of Quincy, Massachusetts, about the activity here. She's talking with Ted Reardon of Somerville, the senator's administrative assistant. Mm -hmm. Pardon us, Joan. Hello. Won't you come in? How many Massachusetts visitors do you have? We have between 50 and 100 visitors each day. Some talk with the senator, others talk with his assistants. And what about all that mail, Joan? Uh, what do you do with it? We receive up to 800 letters a day, more than any other senatorial office. Senator Kennedy never lets any letter or message go by unanswered. When the mail arrives, it is read carefully and sorted according to particular issues or problems. Some people write us of legislative proposals or comments on bills pending in the Senate. Other people write the Senator on personal matters. However, all of the mail is carefully examined and replied to. As a matter of fact, the Senator is in his office right now going over the mail with two of the girls. Won't you go in and join them? Well, thank you, Joan. We'll proceed on in and talk with the Senator. As we enter the senator's office, Helen Limpart from Chicopee and Gloria Lifflin from Chelsea are working with the senator on his daily mail. Senator Kennedy, in his nearly six years in the Senate, has either introduced or co-sponsored approximately 350 bills aimed at strengthening Massachusetts. He is also an influential member of two of the most powerful committees of the Senate, the Foreign Relations Committee, where he consults with Senate Majority Leader Lyndon Johnson and Assistant Majority Leader Mike Mansfield, and the Labor and Public Welfare Committee, Senator Kennedy is also chairman of the subcommittee that writes labor legislation. Here, Senator Kennedy confers with Senator Paul Douglas of Illinois. These are unprecedented achievements for a first-term senator. As you can see, this is an office filled with mementos of Senator Kennedy's family life, of his service in the United States Navy, and of his congressional and senatorial career. Senator Kennedy, uh, could I ask you a few questions? Oh, yes, yeah, surely, you girl. Do you excuse me? Senator, uh, won't you tell us about some of the interesting objects surrounding you here? Yes, I'd be glad to. Uh, this, of course, is a picture of uh, my wife, uh, Jackie, and my daughter, Caroline. Up here, we have a picture of uh, former President Truman and a letter from him. And then here, we have a picture of former President Hoover. I was chairman of the Subcommittee on Reorganization, which considered all the Hoover Commission recommendations. We passed about 30 of them in the Senate. and. Uh, he expressed his appreciation, as I believe it's done a good deal for economy. This is a model of a PT boat on which I served, PT-109, on which I served during the war. And of course, this is the Democratic donkey. What about that coconut on your desk? That's a rather interesting object. Well, our PT boat was sunk by a Japanese destroyer, and uh, we found a native and gave him a coconut, which he took through the lines and wrote a message on it. The boat came and picked us up about 10 days later, and I put the coconut and plastic and have kept it of a, as a memento of a more unpleasant days. Senator, we note that your office is filled also with objects to recall your legislative as well as your military battles. Well, uh, here on my desk are many of the bills which uh, I've introduced on behalf of Massachusetts. Of course, on many of them I've had the close cooperation of my senior colleague, Senator Salvenstall. Senator, uh, won't you tell us something about your campaign for a stronger Massachusetts? Of course, this is a never-ending job because when we reach the solution to one problem, we find new ones arising. 
Massachusetts is either directly or indirectly affected by everything we do or do not do. Let me tell you about a few of the things that we've done. One of the most important continuing tasks is that of bolstering New England's economy. Here, for instance, is the bill which prevented excessive speculation in raw wool. We're a great wool center in Boston. It's part of a broad program we have worked on to halt unfair foreign and domestic competition to the textile and apparel industries in our state, which employ more than 100,000 of our citizens. We have obtained, as part of this program, higher duties on wool textile imports when they are in excess of 5% of domestic production. We have also secured lower tariffs on raw wool imports, on which we depend, and an agreement with Japan to restrict imports to America of certain cotton textiles. Turning to another vital New England industry, I'd like to cite the Kennedy Salt and Stall Fishing and Research Development Bill. $10 million already has been channeled into fishing research and development by this program, including funds for the Albatross No. 3. This ship has been conducting research activities in and around Massachusetts ports and off the New England coast. Here you see underwater photographs taken by the crew of the Albatross to strengthen this industry which provides income for nearly 50,000 Massachusetts residents. Another bill to aid these families is the one leveling tariffs on the imports of fish sticks. Of course, nothing can be accomplished for New England without understanding her unique problems. One of these is the lack of natural resources to provide the kind of cheap electric power which is available in the South and West. To counteract this, Senator John Pastoria of Rhode Island and I obtained passage of legislation giving New England preference for atomic energy. A new atomic energy plant is now being constructed at Rowe, Massachusetts as a result of this bill. Of course, Senator, we know these are but three vital areas in which you have worked to strengthen Massachusetts. Another important part of our Massachusetts economy is Commonwealth Pier in Boston Harbor. We all recall when this vital facility, which carries one-fourth of the tonnage that moved through the port of Boston, was a safety hazard and was to be torn down. Now, however, as a result of the coordinated efforts of Senator Kennedy, Senator Saltonstall, and Congressman John McCormick, it is once more carrying its heavy share of harbor traffic safely and economically. In the wake of the floods, tornadoes, and hurricanes that have devastated New England, Senator Kennedy successfully sponsored legislation to establish a flood insurance program and new flood control works. He obtained emergency disaster relief for those who suffered loss. To illustrate another area in which Senator Kennedy has attempted to preserve the historic concepts of this nation and look after the interests of individuals, let's talk with Salvatore Tusa of Medford, Massachusetts. Io sono venuto in America nel 1955 e la mia famiglia non ho potuto venire assieme a me. Poi sono venuto eh, aiuto nel ministro Canapì e mi è venuto all'incontro. Mr. Giuseppe's knees will translate. I am Mrs. Rovito, Mr. Tusa's niece. My uncle said he came into this country in 1955 but was not able to take his family with him. Through Mr. Kennedy's efforts, he was reunited in this wonderful country of ours, and he wishes to thank Senator Kennedy very much. Other families, like the Tusas, now can be brought together in America as a result of Senator Kennedy's bill revising the McCarran-Walter Immigration Act. The Kennedy bill opens this nation's doors wider to people from friendly countries seeking safety and refuge here. Between 60 and 70,000 refugees, orphans, and escapees from tyranny will enter the United States under this law. In the field of foreign affairs, Senator Kennedy has fought to utilize United States economic aid to keep the torch of freedom burning among Poles, Finns, and others held against their will behind the Iron Curtain. 
major accomplishment of the Senate during the past year and a half has been the ferreting out of racketeers, hoodlums, and management hired union busters who have infiltrated the union movement. Senator Kennedy, as a member of the McClellan Rackets Committee, and his brother Bob, as chief counsel to the committee, have played key roles in this historic episode. Well, the fact is, though, that you were paying them a bribe then. I was paying them a bribe. A bribe. I paid it with the complete knowledge of the United States I'm government. I'm not talking now about that. I'm talking about your own responsibility. You know that that's prohibited by law for you to pay a bribe. Well, there's no bribe as far as I was concerned. We're talking about the fact that you gave $175 a week in cash to Mr. McHugh, and it was your impression at the time you were giving it that it was going into his pocket now, isn't that correct? No, it was not my impression it was going into his pocket. He advised us for the needy union men and yes, friends. but you've already testified that at first you believed him and that then you didn't, isn't that uh, correct? Later on, later on, I was, from what various statements they said and what I heard at Tobahanna, I was of the opinion that probably they were lying to me. Well, then you continued to pay the money? I continued to pay the money. Well, then you were giving him a bribe. Well, now, Mr. Harper, uh, how did the uh, account reconstruct this? Why, well, I no he talked to the people. Well, who did he talk to? I imagine he talked to the people involved. He talked to you? We discussed the matter, yes. And you told him what had happened? No, I told him when I uh, borrowed the money, or I thought I had borrowed the money. And when you thought you'd paid it back? And I thought when I paid it back, and he checked it, and these are the records he gave me. Now, shows how your memory can slip. Apparently, instead of 52, it was 51. I thought Arthur, it was who else did he talk to, your account? Who did he talk yeah, to? Who else did he talk to in making these, uh, this report to you? I assume the people who were involved. Well, how many people were involved? Offhand, you mean the loans? Yeah. Well, I'll have to count and tell you. The loans we're now talking about. You talked to Mr. Holtzman? Mr. Holtzman. Well, Holtzman happened to be dead. That's right. So well, who else did he talk to? Probably Bushkin. So in other words, the people that he talked to, your accountant, were you and Mr. Bushkin. Now, did he talk to any other people? I wouldn't know. But, Mr. Hobbs, you came and read, read before the committee this statement that your accountant has been over it and has now indicated that you uh, borrowed the money in such and such a year and repaid the money in such and such a year. Now, when did your accountant make this study? When did he make it? Yes. Did he just I, make it? The last few months? That's right. The last few days. The last few days he made this determination. And the only people that he said, and you can't tell us who he talked to besides you, Mr. Hopper, and the other gentleman who well, was Well, I think you'll have to ask him, Senator. Your accountant, I'm asking you. You're the one who made the report to the committee about the what your accountant found, and now we find that there are no records, that he merely talked to you and to the other gentlemen involved, and that the whole Senator. transaction was in cash. The legislative outgrowth of this long series of investigations was the Kennedy Ives bill, designed to strengthen unionism by ridding it of those who would rob the working man of both his dues and his rights. This important measure passed the Senate 88 to 1 but was defeated by a close vote in the House of Representatives. These were the words of Senator Kennedy and Senator Ives the day of the House action. Only Jimmy Hoffa can rejoice at his continued good luck. Honest union members and the general public can only regard it as a tragedy that politics has prevented the bipartisan recommendations of the McClellan Committee, which passed the Senate 88 to 1 from being passed in the House of Representatives. Constructive labor legislation, however, for the reform of this general area will be brought again to the Congress next year. In the meantime, those who defeated this bill will bear a heavy responsibility for the racketeering that will continue to go on unchecked. And now we hear from Senator Ives of New York. The Kennedy Ives bill is a good bill. It would have put Hoffa out of business, for example. But a lot of the House members were misled by false propaganda from the NAM, the U.S. Chamber of Commerce, the American Retail Federation, the Teamsters, and the United Mine Workers. Can you imagine a more unholy alliance? They represent the extremists in both camps. And I want to say this, that while the Senate passed this bill 88 to 1, we did it by a bipartisan approach. Senator Kennedy is a Democrat. I'm a Republican. We work together on this business. Politics, partisan politics, has never been within our consideration. And as I look at that House vote, I'm ashamed of my party. The vote was in favor of it. Democrats, 149. Republicans, 41. A total of 190. Against it, Democrats, 61. Republicans, 137. A total of 198. That speaks for itself. And the House has a long ways to go 
before it approaches the nonpartisan attitude of Senator Kennedy and myself and many other Republicans and Democrats in the Senate. Of course, Senator Kennedy also has retained a keen interest in other human problems. He fought to extend unemployment compensation to 39 weeks. He led successful campaigns to raise the national minimum wage to $1 and lower the retirement age for women. Senator Kennedy sponsored the legislation which will establish America's first National Library of Medicine. This library will provide the nation with a vital medical research facility, the largest in the world, will safeguard priceless and irreplaceable medical journals that are now housed in antiquated makeshift quarters. The people of Massachusetts also know that as a direct result of Senator Kennedy's 1952 campaign pledge, he, with the cooperation of Senator Saltonstall, founded the New England Conference of Senators. This conference brought together for the first time in history 12 New England senators, Republicans and Democrats, in a successful effort to achieve economic and social gains for this area of the nation. Senator, since the people of Massachusetts always have been interested in your personal as well as your professional life, we would like to share with them in recollection some of the intimate highlights of the last few years. Let's begin with that day in January 1953, when the beloved Veep, Alvin W. Barkley, swore you in as junior senator from Massachusetts. As your entry into the Senate was an important political event of 1953, your wedding to Jacqueline Bovier was a romantic highlight of that year. Another highlight in both your lives, of course, was the birth last November of your daughter Caroline and her christening a few weeks later by Archbishop Richard Cushing. We recall also, Senator, your role in one of the most successful political dramas of recent years, the fight for the 1956 Democratic vice presidential nomination. Here are some tense moments from that race which began with your nomination by Governor Ribicoff of Connecticut and reached its climax with a second ballot when you came within 20 and a half votes of capturing the nomination. John Kennedy of Massachusetts. is an outstanding American. John Kennedy of Massachusetts is a great Democrat. John Kennedy of Massachusetts is a successful campaigner and a successful candidate every time he has run for public office. The convention will be in order and the clerk will proceed with the second roll call of the states for the nomination for the Vice Presidency of the United States. Alabama passes. Alaska, six votes. Mr. Chairman, Alaska casts six votes for Estes Kefauver. New York has one and a half votes for Key Faber. Ninety-six and a half votes for the next Vice President of the United States, Senator Kennedy. Texas, 56 votes. Texas proudly cast its vote for that fighting sailor who wears the scars of battle and that fearless senator, the next vice president of the United States, John Kennedy of Massachusetts. Does the state of Tennessee desire recognition? Mr. Chairman. Tennessee. Mr. Chairman, Tennessee respectfully requests the opportunity for candidate Albert Gore to make a brief announcement. Sure. Mr. Chairman, with thanks to this great free democratic convention, I request that my name be withdrawn in favor of my colleague, Senator F. Fiske Farber. Mr. Chairman, Florida now cash 17 and one half sunshine votes for Senator Kefauver. 10 and one half. 
for Senator Kennedy. Senator John Kennedy of Massachusetts. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, ladies and gentlemen of uh, this convention, I want to uh, take this opportunity first to express my appreciation to Democrats from all parts of the country, north and south, east and west, who have been uh, so generous and kind to me uh, this afternoon. I think that it proves, as uh, nothing else could prove, what a strong and united party the Democratic Party is. Secondly, I think what has happened today bears out the good judgment of Governor Stevenson in deciding that this issue should be taken to the floor of the convention. Because I believe that the Democratic Party will go from this convention far stronger for what we have done here today. And therefore, ladies and gentlemen, recognizing that this convention has selected a man who has campaigned in all parts of the country, who has worked entirely for the party, who will serve as an admirable running mate to Governor Stevenson, I hope that this convention will make F.C. Kefauver's nomination unanimous. Thank you. I move that we suspend the rules and make the nomination of F.C. Kefauver by acclamation. Of course, Senator, no recounting of your personal triumphs would be complete without mentioning the Pulitzer Prize you won in 1957 for writing Profiles in Courage. It was an interesting uh, job because all of us who hold a position in a legislature are concerned with the problems of how other senators and congressmen have endured the pressures which all of us undergo. One of the most heartening things about it has been the fact that the United States Information Service has chosen it to be translated in order to explain one phase of American life. I have here the copy that is in Vietnamese, and here a copy in Japanese, and it's also been translated into Hebrew for use in the country of Israel and also in Spanish. And I have here a letter from George Allen, which came this summer, the head of the United States Information Service, in which he says that Profiles and Courage has proved to be exceptionally effective in promoting a clearer understanding of American statesmen among our foreign audiences. And of course, that's been one of the very beneficial things which have sprung out of the book. Thank you, Senator, for letting us visit with you here in your office. Now may we meet the rest of your family. Yes, I'll take you to my house and uh, I'll introduce them to you. Thank you very much, Senator Kennedy. something in the Senate, and now to see our house where we've lived a year and since Caroline was born. And I look forward to meeting all of you this fall as soon as the Senate is out and we'll be back in Massachusetts. What's this? very much for coming to see us and we'll look forward to seeing you in uh, very shortly. Say goodbye to Caroline. That's good. This has been a visit in Washington with your United States Senator John F. Kennedy. In this great city aglow with tributes to America's past, 
is being written America's future. The authors of that future will in a large part be the 98 members of the United States Senate. The Senate's members must understand thoroughly both foreign policy and the day-to-day -day economic and social problems of the people they represent. They must be men of stature, courage, and ability. Such a man is John F. Kennedy. He serves Massachusetts with distinction in the United States Senate.